Welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé Recap. Let's talk before the 90 Season 7, Episode 7. There's a lot to talk about, so let's begin starting with, um, Tiger Lily and Adnan. Tiger Lily is very frustrated because she's doing the best she can to respect him and to make him happy, but these Islam rules are just too much. I just don't like how he thinks the rules don't apply to him. Uh, cause they don't. Actually, the literal rules are that men can do all the things that women can't do. Hello? I've been trying really hard to follow all of Adnan's rules. I've been completely open to changing my entire life but he just thinks that the rules don't apply to him. Adnan can clearly see that she's actually upset. Like, this is serious, it's not for the cameras. So he's like, oh baby, come on, how can I change your mood? Like, I really want you to be happy. I don't like that you're unhappy. And she's like, I don't know. I don't understand. Like, what? He apologizes, he's so sorry. Come on, baby, let's have a great day. And she's like, Okay, we'll talk about it later. They ride the camels and oh my god, did anyone catch Tiger Lily saying, The camels had thick eyelashes, just like me. <laughs> we look like twins. Oh my god, oh my god. She was like, I loved the camels. They were so cute in their little mini clothes and their long, long eyelashes. I mean, I really like writing anything. <laughs> okay, their field trip is over. In the car, Shay expresses how she's a little concerned that they've been having all these fights and what, what's going to happen when he goes to America. The fights aren't going to disappear. The problems aren't going to disappear. So is it just going to escalate? Is it going to get any worse? And Anand's like, oh God, Shay, stop putting ideas into her head. Like, stop making things worse. And Tiger Lily's like, I don't know. It's Tiger Lily's last night and they're both very, very sad. He cries. She cries. They cry together. Does we need the way? I'm with you forever, Dori. Moving on to Chitty and Rainy. Chitty and Rainy are still fighting. Actually, no, she's fighting with his sister. I'm done with Victoria's bull crap. If Chitty really loves me, it's time for him to prove it now. So she asks him again. Are you gonna come to the hotel with me, Chitty Chitty? I love you, Chitty Chitty. This is your last chance. And he's like, uh, I, I have some stuff to do. Like, stuff. Like what, Chitty? Um, I have to color code my closet. Wow, this is bullcrap, Chitty. I know you're lying, Chitty. You barely have any clothes in your closet. This is humiliating. He keeps saying that he's going to be too tempted by staying in a room with her. But come on, we all know the truth. It's because he's scared. I wish he would just tell her. Please just tell her I'm scared that you're going to murder me in my sleep and then skin me and then feed me to your alien gods. But he's too scared to tell her the truth. And honestly, like, I get it. I don't blame him. She's like, why do you keep having to ask your siblings for permission? I feel like an intruder chitty in your pants and in your home. Okay. There's a reason. There's a reason right. for that. Because look what happened. Not known for There's the first time. Who we tell? I can't cope with sisters. I always you felt deep down. You, you, you because, see now. Like, you see said. You said Shh. you can't cope with sisters. Hey, Shut I'm, up, Chitty. They start arguing. Chitty's brother-in-law comes in to check up on him. Understandable. I would too to make sure the bitch don't go all Lorena Bobbitt on his ass. She turns around in the middle of her rant, and whoop! Victoria's husband is there, and she goes, "Oh, I don't know. You were here. Uh, we're fine. What if?" She gets flustered for a second. At one point, the brother-in-law stares her down. He's so confused. He doesn't understand if she's acting, if this is a shtick, like, is, is she serious? Regardless, I think he just wants her the hell out and he's clearly biting his tongue. Rainy is freaking out. Oh, Jenny, why are your sister is evil? I feel this fearful spirits. It's a darkness, Jenny, there's a darkness. So Sister Victoria finally walks in and then they start arguing. Why did you get on the you phone? Know, you say, I, I love you. Not love. Of I, course you know. I love you. Come you over. We want you. you. Of course you know. I don't like you because you do this and that. What the fuck was that? <laughs> 
The fight and the argument keeps escalating. Rainy is losing her damn mind every second. She's losing it more and more. She's like a rabid animal. She's hissing. She's barking at poor Chitty's sister. And the way she hushed Victoria. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's fine. It's fine. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Calm down, down, girl. Ooh, I would have. Things are getting too heated, so Victoria's sister steps in again, and he's like, wait a minute, you're talking to my wife right now, this is my house, you have to have some respect, and she goes, Trini, you better defend me now, right now, Trini, this is gonna be, this is gonna tell me, I told you, sisters have a dark energy. You, you, know you better stick up for me, did I not always tell you that I always had a feeling about sisters? The aliens told me on Earth when it first started into the program, Trini, the program of chickens, yeah, you left, you left, but you're gonna see the truth. And this moment right here will prove the feeling that I had the entire freaking time. Let me tell you this, when Earth first started, and go, yeah, roll your eyes, but when, like I said, when Earth first started, it wasn't a program. Welcome to your program, okay? <gasps> Where did they find her? I guess this is what happens when you live off of Hamburger Helper and Chef Boyardee every day. You can't fix crazy. You can't fix stupid. The brother-in-law just needs to stop. He's like, is this for real? Like, are you acting crazy in front of the cameras? Like, he was genuinely confused. Thankfully, by God's grace, the batshit QAnon alien worshiping monster leaves. Woo! Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh my God. It just played out hurtful in every way. But I'm used to the pain. So I Dude. I feel bad for her kids. Her kids are still young and they have to live with that. Her kids are either going to turn into her like a mini version or they're going to escape her. I don't know. I just have a feeling they're probably going to end up like her. Let's move on to Matilda and Niles. Niles is in the bathroom shitting his brains out. Apparently his stomach couldn't handle all the new spices. She tells him flat out, you rejected my poon last night. Like I really wanted to do it, but then you stopped. Why? And he goes, mm, I was just trying to be responsible. And then the cameras go to his area. Like, sir, why did y'all do that? Editors, I need to know. Like, why was that a creative choice? <laughs> it was awkward. And then in his interview, he talks about Schmex with his ex-girlfriend and how he doesn't want to repeat uh, his old patterns or his old mistakes. And it's so hilarious how he tells producers, Hi, can you please uh, put a disclaimer for my parents? Like, I want my parents to cover their ears. Mom and dad, please don't listen. <laughs> you guys, it was so cute and so wholesome. Oh, God, hilarious. Dad, mom, dad, please cover your ears. Can we, can we put that part in before we start talking about this? Matilda's like, okay, okay, fine. I'll wait until we get married. So uh, we got to get married like tomorrow. So that we can bang. Like, let's get married ASAP. And he's like, okay, honey, okay. <laughs> now, the question is, how difficult does, does this become for her when, I, when she realizes that I don't want to get married right this instant? What is that? Sea urchin. Poisonous. That's poisonous. She's not poisonous. Yes, it is. No. God, I really hope Matilda doesn't end up disappointing us. He takes her shopping. Yay, what girl doesn't love a shopping spree? She picks out a dress or a skirt and it's $80. And he's like, what? $80? And she shoots him a look. She's like, and he goes, uh, yeah, put it on my card. And he only did that because he knows he's going to have to drop a bomb later. So he's hoping maybe that'll piss her off a little less when he tells her that they're not going to get married. He also takes her to a salon. He sits her down in the chair and he's like, hey, I'll be right back. And he goes engagement ring shopping. Why is he going engagement ring? Oh, no, I know. It's to soften the blow again. He's showering her with all these gifts so that when he tells her the ultimate news that she won't kill him. Let's meet Vanya. She's 41 years old from Orlando, Florida. She's a belly dancer and she loves performing. She just loves entertaining people and it seems like she's really good at what she does. But that's not the only thing she does. She has a bunch of other jobs. She's a medical sales rep, a professional makeup artist, and even a baker. What? How, how does she have the time to do all that? Damn, I feel useless. 
She seems to have everything going with her, except for the man. She really, really wants a man. She was engaged before, but she walked in on her fiance making out with another hoe. She's now dating Bojo. It's unfortunate that it's spelled like Bozo. Instead of the Z, why couldn't that be a J? Bojo. So far, his introduction seems great. He's cute. He seems nice and funny. Like, what could go wrong? Well, something already went wrong. In the very beginning of their relationship, I think it was a few months, she said, she found out that he was seeing someone else. Then shortly after, he came crawling back and asking for another chance. And she gave it to him. And then all of a sudden, I noticed Boja was acting a little strange, not picking up the phones, not being as communicative. And he just says, uh, Vanya, I can't see you anymore. I'm seeing somebody here. Sorry. So she's going to Croatia to see him. I can't remember if she said it was going to be the first time that she's met him. But anyway, she hasn't had Schmex in six years. And her friends call her Vahina a camel because apparently camels can go a long time without drinking water. Then she talks about her childhood and it's so... She grew up in Bosnia and she survived a war. When she was 10 years old, she had no electricity and barely any food for a whole entire year. She had to live through constant bombs and she almost got killed multiple times. And holy shit, that is terrifying that is horrifying i can't even like i cannot wrap my head around what that might feel like like and also what's more insane and well not more but you know just as equally as devastating is that this is happening in some parts of the world right now as i'm recapping this as you're watching this places and people are getting bombed right now and it's fucking devastating it's finally the day, so she goes to the airport. She's about to hop on her flight, but she quickly calls him to check in, and he does not answer. And this really worries her because she hadn't heard from him the entire day. And given her history, remember what he did? So I don't know if I said this, but before when he broke up with her, she was planning her trip to Croatia to meet him. And then he was like, oh babe, just letting you know, I'm actually dating another girl, so sorry. So the fact that she hasn't heard from him the day that she's leaving, she's super paranoid and I totally get it. But I think it ends up being a fake out because we see him in the next episode. Brian, Brian, Brian. Oh my God, Brian. Okay, so he meets Ingrid's friends. Her friends are very surprised that she's dating a man in a wheelchair. They get to know him. They like him. They accept him. One of the girls asks, so how was your schmex? Listen, I'm pretty sure the producers told them to ask this, right? Because this is just not a normal question to ask. Have you guys ever asked your friends like, oh, how schmecks? No. Mm -mm. Anyway, Brian tells them that they haven't had schmecks yet. Like, I don't know if it's word vomit or if it's just stupidity, but he tells them that in the last 15 years, he's only dated Brazilian women. And every single time he comes to meet them in person, he sleeps with them on the first night. Why would you say that? Like, why would you admit that, bro? Ew. I get that he was trying to prove a point that he's taking Ingrid a lot more seriously. She's different from the rest. He wants to take things slow. Da da da. da. But he could have, I don't know. He's just weird. Well, they obviously must have talked about it before because she didn't seem surprised by it. Although in the ITM, she said she was surprised by it. So was she surprised or was she not? I don't know. Hey, já tá. Já tá. <laughs> oh, they're finally gonna do it. They're finally gonna do it. They get back to the hotel and things are heating up. She puts on this red lingerie and she looks hot. The camera crew leaves to give them some privacy. And then they find out that Brian and Ingrid got into another fight. So apparently she gave him the green light to bang. But then he didn't have a rubber. So then he offered to go downtown. And when he tried to go downtown, she stopped him and said no. He's like, yeah, I should have had a rubber. But for her to just shut everything down, like I was offering a compromise. I was offering something else. But she just rejected me and it hurt. Okay, boo fucking who? Oh my God, go cry about it. Go write about it in your diary. Once I went to go kiss her stomach, she basically hand in the face like, nope, stop. But for her to shut everything down and, and end the way it did, it hurt me. It hurt me. How are you not going to have a rubber when he specifically said he has blue pills prepared with him at all times? Because he never knows when it's going to happen. Also, how are you going to have a rubber on the first night and then make her watch you put it on during your nighttime routine? 
Okay, but when it comes to the actual thing, you don't have the actual rubber. Like, what? The math ain't mathin'. So then we hear her side of the story, and it's the same. She said they were gonna have schmacks. She asked him to put on a rubber. He didn't have one. And then he was about to go downtown, and she said no. And then he got upset and left. See, he missed that part. But then it was pretty obvious that he got upset and left. Like, she's allowed to want to get dicked down, but not want her kitty cat eaten. Okay, does that make sense? Like, you're allowed to want different things. But he doesn't get it. His ego is too bruised. All he's focused on is the rejection. So he's going to be a little bitch baby about it. Like, dude, go home. I think he's taking out all his insecurities onto her. He's projecting so bad. He's literally doing everything but therapy. Like, he really should talk to a professional. Our girly pop Faith is back with her loser boyfriend, Lauren. Loser Lauren. That's what we're going to call him. LL. Loser Lauren. She knocks on his door and he's like, oh, hi, come on in. And she's like, no, bitch, you come outside. And he's like, okay. You guys, she went to a food stand and even bought him a banana snack. Like, what a sweetheart. I literally wanted to grab the bananas and tell him to choke on it. Just kidding. He tells her, I went to the doctor, I'm on medication, and it's going to be gone after a week. He finally apologizes, but he does it in a weird accent. He's like, I'm sorry, I cheated on you. What the fuck? First, where did that accent come from? And what is that accent? And hopefully I can become boyfriend again. And then one day, real fiance. And then she's like, you were supposed to meet my parents. I can't bring you to their house after you've cheated on me and got gonorrhea. I'm going to introduce you as my friend. And then he goes, so you want to introduce me as your boyfriend? Again, he has this weird fucking accent that he brought from somewhere. Uh, who the fuck knows? And then when he started speaking broken English, I wanted a... <laughs> she ultimately tells him that she'll give him another chance to prove to her that he's changed. In the preview for the next episode, we meet Bojo. Lauren goes to meet Faith's parents as her, quote, friend. Tiger Lily and Anand say goodbye. Brian continues to do everything but therapy. Niles tells Matilda about the non-wedding, and Sunny finds out that Vaya's hiding her ex in the corner. Woo! Can't wait!